Now we will see the damage of some lower motor neurons of the corticobulbar tract or the nucleus of these neurons. This will be very, very important in order to understand the damage that could be presented in a patient with Warmer syndrome or middle pointing syndrome, etc., the midbrain syndromes. So, um, remember we have the, the cortex. Here is the first neuron. Then, in some part of the brainstem, it will cross to the other side and synapse on some lower motor neuron, that is some cranial nerve nucleus. So, in this video, we will just talk um, first about the trigeminus, vagus, and hypoglossus. So, the goal of this video is to understand why if we damage in the in the brainstem, um, brainstem lesions like the Wallenberg syndrome, etc. Um, why the patient would present if if the vagus nerve is involved? Why it would present with the uvula dressing toward the opposite side? And if the trigeminal nerve is involved, why would it present with the mandible dressing toward the side of the lesion and the hypoglossal um, uh, involvement? Why the the tongue would dress to the side of the lesion? So. First, the muscles that innervate the tongue include the, the hypoglossus. This retracts and depresses the tongue. The palatoglossus is the only one that do not uh, that, that ends in glossus that is not innervated by the hypoglossus. This elevates the palate, soft palate. The styloglossus elevates and retracts, retracts the tongue. For swallowing and the genioglossus, that is the one that we are going to test, protrudes and depresses the tongue. Mm. Now, first, the mandible is innervated by the trigeminus, the tongue by the hypoglossus, and the uvula by the vagus. So, let's see first the mandible. So, if the, if the right mandible is, is contracted, then the, the mandible will deviate towards the left. If the left mandible is contracted, the mandible will deviate towards the right. So, if we damage, let's say, this one. We are damaging, so, the left lower motor neuron, or the nucleus of the left lower motor neuron. So, there is no innervation to the left mandible. And because there is no innervation of this left mandible, then the mandible cannot what happens if we activate the left mandible? Goes to the right side. So because we cannot, we, we cannot uh, contract the left mandible, then the mandible is only moved by the right mandible, and so the mandible deviates toward the side of the lesion because on opposed action of the contralateral mandible, but the contralateral mandible moves the mandible to the contralateral side. Then for the uvula. The uvula is inhibited by the vagus nerve, so if there is contraction of both the neoglossus muscle, then, then the uvula will not be to any one of the sides. If there is contraction or activation of only one vagus nerve, then the uvula deviates towards that side. If the uvula is contracted for the left side, the uvula deviates towards that side. If now there is damage to the this lower motor neuron, Sorry, I, I said the inoglossus, I meant um, palatoglossus. If, if we damage this left vagus nerve, lower motor neuron, then the uvula cannot deviate towards the side, and so the uvula deviates towards the other side, so it's contralateral to the lesion. And for the hypoglossus, if we damage the hypoglossus nerve and we ask the patient to protrude the thong, if we protrude the thong, there is no deviation because both and genioglossus are contracted. If only the right genioglossus is contracted, the tongue deviates to the opposite side, in kind of the mm, kind of the opposite side to which we are contracting. If we, we contract the left genioglossus, the tongue deviates towards the right side. Now, if there is damage to the left genioglossus, then the tongue cannot go towards the, ri the right. 
and so the right hemisphere glossus have no opposition, and so the tongue deviates towards the left, that is towards the side of the lesion. So actually, the one that is easier is the the vagus, because that is just uh, if I contract this side, the ulna deviates towards the side. So if there is damage, deviates towards the contralateral side anyway. So <coughs> if if the patient has a damage to the lower motor neuron or to the nucleus of these um, nerves, if it is of the trigeminus, it would deviate toward the side of the lesion. If it is of the vagus, the uvula deviates toward the opposite side of the lesion. If it is of the hypoglossus, it would deviate toward the side of the lesion. Now, this is because we are damaging the lower motor neuron or the um, body or the axon, the same. If we would have damaged the upper, with the task would be other history. Well, we have some cross fibers, and also the, they would be, in a sense, kind of the opposite. Anyway, um, this this is very important because in the brain um, brain stem lesions that we will see later, we are damaging at the level of the nucleus or at the level of the nerve. So we are damaging lower motor neuron, and because we are damaging lower motor neuron, the patient presents with this the ipsilateral um, deficit and the ipsilateral deficit can manifest as the uvula deviates toward the side of the lesion, the mandible deviates uh, the uvula towards the opposite side, the mandible towards the side, the, the um, tongue towards the side of the lesion.